how big of a battery bank do you really need? Most homeowners get this wrong and it could cost you thousands. And here's the part that nobody's really talking about. The battery market has completely changed in just the last three years. For decades, you didn't need a battery because of net metering. Utilities were paying you full retail rates for your extra solar power, but that's ending fast. Regulators across the country are killing one for one net metering. Utilities are slashing buyback rates to just one or two cents per kilowatt hour instead of the usual retail rates of 15 to 40 cents. Translation, the old sell your extra solar power to the grid strategy is dead. Smart homeowners are no longer giving away that energy for pennies on the dollar. They're storing it in batteries and using it to power their homes at nights during blackouts or to squeeze out every bit of ROI from their solar system. And here's the kicker. There is no one size fits all answer. The right battery size depends on your usage, your goals and your budget. So stick around because by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to calculate your battery needs, avoid the most common sizing mistakes and make the smartest decision for your home solar and batteries. Before we dive into battery sizes, let's deal with the elephant in the room. In states like California, Hawaii, Arizona, Nevada, and more are coming to the list every month, if you've got solar without batteries, you're basically running a charity for your utility company. Here's why. Traditional net metering used to be simple. You sold your extra solar power for 15 cents per kilowatt hour, and you bought it back later for the same 15 cents. Fair deal. But the new reality? Brutal. In many states, you can now only sell your solar for one to two cents per kilowatt hour. And then hold your breath. You have to buy back at 15 to 50 cents per kilowatt hour. That means you're giving away 14 to 49 cents of value on every single kilowatt hour that your solar generated that you didn't store. And it gets worse. Most utility companies now crank up rates for four to five times higher during peak hours, usually between 4 and 9 p.m., exactly when your panels aren't producing. That's where batteries flip the script. A properly sized battery shifts your cheap midday solar onto those expensive evening hours. The result? Savings of $150 to $300 a month on electric bills. But here's the catch. Every home is different. So the first step is figuring out what's essential versus what's not essential. Think of it this way. It's just essential loads are the things you can't live without. Your refrigerator, freezer, lights, the internet, TV, microwave, CPAP machine, medical devices, etc. Non-essential loads, they're usually the energy hogs. Air conditioning, heating, water heater, dishwasher, washing machine, electric range. Get this distinction right and you'll size your battery correctly from day one. Now, quick heads up before we jump into sizing. Everything that I'm about to show you is for lithium iron phosphate batteries only. That's we're talking about batteries like the Tesla Powerwall, the Franklin A Power 2, the Enphase, the Solar Edge, and the Point Guard batteries. If you're looking for lead acid or other chemistries, this sizing won't apply to you. All right, let's talk about battery sizing, starting with scenario one, backup power only. Now this is for homeowners who just want enough battery to keep the lights on during an outage. Think states that still have one is to one net metering, like the Northeast parts of Texas and Florida. But here's the spoiler, in true net metered states, batteries don't save you money on your electric bill, period. They are only good for backup power. There is no reason to store energy to use it later at night or peak hours if your utility is already crediting you one is to one with true net metering. A quick note, if you're on a time of use TOU rate plan, this scenario doesn't apply to you. Your sizing will fall under scenario two, which we'll be doing next. So how do we size a battery for backup? Simple. We need your average daily usage in kilowatt hours, broken down by month. Now, some utilities give you a nice graph. Here's Sam's usage in New Jersey. 
if you don't have that graph, not a problem. Just take your monthly bill in kilowatt hours and divide that by 30 and you'll get your daily average. Pretty easy. Now here's the key. December is the month with the shortest days and the least sunlight. Your battery must have enough capacity to cover a full day in December. That's the benchmark for year-round reliability. For example, Sam's average December usage is about 20 kilowatt hours per day. That means Sam needs a 20 kilowatt hour battery if he wants full home backup, both essential and non-essential loads. But here's the catch. Having the right size battery isn't enough. You also need enough solar panels to recharge that battery every day. Otherwise one outage and you're stuck. For Sam, they have been installing a 10 kW solar array to produce 20 kilowatt hours per day in December. Just enough to fully recharge his backup battery. Now Sam didn't want to spend for a full 20 kWh battery stack. So he decided to go with a slightly smaller Franklin A Power 2 15 kWh battery. That setup comfortably runs all his essential loads plus a few extras without breaking the bank. Okay, now let's look at scenario two. Battery sizing in a state with no net metering or somewhere with time of use billing or with both. So this one's especially for homeowners in California, Nevada, Arizona. Look at Lori in Santa Clara as an example. Her highest usage months are July and August. That's when she burns through about 40 kilowatt hours a day. So here's the strategy. We want Lori's battery to charge during cheap off-peak hours and then carry her through the brutal 4 to 9 p.m. peak hours when electricity can cost her 50 cents per kilowatt hours or more through her battery. A good rule of thumb here, about 60% of your usage happens during peak hours and 40% during off-peak. So for Lori, that works to about 16 kilowatt hours of storage to cover those expensive peak periods. That's the sweet spot to completely wipe out those nasty peak hour power bills. She chose the Enphase IQ 5P battery and went with the 20 kilowatt hour support to give her a little bit of cushion. But once again, the battery isn't the whole story. Your solar system has to generate enough power to keep that battery charged every day. I designed a 9.5 kW solar array. It produces about 14,500 kilowatt hours per year, plenty to keep her battery topped off year round and ready to crush those peak rates. And that brings us to our final scenario, off-grid living. Now this is where things get serious. If you're off-grid, you just can't size your battery for one day. You'll need to plan for at least three days of storage. That's what's going to get you through a brutal winter storm or a stretch of really cloudy weather in December. Typical off-grid systems need between 30 to 50 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. The rule is the same. Start by looking at your daily usage in December, the darkest month of the year. Take the Davidson family in the Poconos in Pennsylvania. Their December usage is about 14 kilowatt hours per day. To cover three full days of off-grid, they need about 45 kilowatt hours of storage. So they went with three Franklin A Power 2 batteries, each 15 kilowatt hours, totaling 45 kilowatt hours. That gave them a solid three days of backup. But here's the key. Off-grid isn't just about batteries. You need a lot more solar panels to charge those much larger battery banks. For the Davidsons, we installed an 18 kW ground mounted system. Even in the dead of winter, that system generates 40 kilowatt hours or more per day. Just about enough to fully recharge their 45 kilowatt hour battery bank. And that folks is how you design a system that keeps your lights on, your fridge running, and your family safe, even when the grid is nowhere in sight. So how would you size a battery for your own home? Let me make this simple. Step one is find your average daily energy use. Grab your electric bills or call the utility. They'll send you a monthly usage statement. Take each month's kilowatt hours and divide by 30. And now you've got your daily average for every month of the year. From there, the calculation depends on your utility's rules, your location, and your goals. If you live in a 101 net metering area, you only need backup. You go to scenario one. Look at your December daily usage. And that's the size of the battery you'll need for full home backup year round. 
want just the essentials, you can size down to about 60% of your December usage. For example, if your December usage is about 20 kilowatt hours, for full backup, you need a 20 kWh battery. For an essentials only backup, you'll need a 12 kWh battery. Now, if you're in a TOU, a time of use re region or a state with uh, no net metering, use scenario two. Look at your highest summer month. Say in July, you're using 50 kilowatt hours per day. Size your battery to about 60% of that number. So that's around a 30 kilowatt hour battery. Of course, if you're off grid, it's a different ball game. Plan for at least three days of winter usage. Now I've built a load calculator, a daily load calculator, which makes this easy. If you want a copy, just email me solar at mysolarhome.us and I'll send it your way. And that's it. Now you got the blueprint to size a battery for your home. And here's my final advice. Always work with a trusted solar company that understands both battery and panel sizing and make sure they show you exactly how they sized your system. Are they matching your usage with the battery's capacity? What does the output of the solar panel look like month by month? Do not skip this part. Look at the solar production chart and ask them what the battery size is. Make sure it produces enough energy to keep your battery charged even in the dead of winter. If this video helped you, do hit that like and subscribe button for more straight answers on solars and batteries. And you might like my previous videos on choosing different batteries or different inverters. Have a great one and thank you for watching.